What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 127 I think and we take on Ibar for the first game of today's episode here. Ibar currently sitting in the relegation zone. We are top of the table by quite a few points as well. As I mentioned before, uh, next season if we do carry on with this series, I'm not too sure yet, but if we do carry on with the season next season, when these sort of games come up with their home league games against the bottom five teams, I'll start simulating them. But in this season I'm not going to do so we simulated two games against Ponferradina but um, yeah there's no need to simulate anymore because I want to play these games just in case there's a possibility because I don't really want to rule it out even though I don't want to be, uh, sound too cocky there is a possibility we could have an undefeated season in La Liga which would be absolutely crazy uh, regardless the first chance would fall to the relegation uh, threat inside in the first five minutes that header going just over the bar and behind for a goal kick so I was coming to this game thinking it would be all one-way traffic to be honest but instead that was a really good opportunity there just over the bar but it was still nil-nil from the goal kick though we work out forward and young Halalise gets on the ball, fake shots around his man, plays it through towards Morata the uh, pass takes a bit of a deflection but it comes back to Alvaro Morata and the former Juventus and Real Madrid striker smashes the ball in, in off the uh, inside the near post and makes it Racing 1 Ibar nil. so one goal up in this game, 7 minutes in, Morata with the goal and of course you guys know that every single time Morata or Rodriguez scores we'll be taking a quick look to see how many they've got for the season right now, that's now Morata's 15th goal in La Liga as he tries to play catch up with Jesse Rodriguez Still Racing 1, Ibar nil, And in the 21st minute here, Elise's shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick, but it was still 1-0. And after Ibar's first chance of the game, I was expecting them to keep on attacking, but instead they dropped really, really deep. And in the 34th minute, how about this for a goal by Paco Candela? Absolutely fantastic. Sorry, 39th minute even. How about this for a goal from Paco Candela? He gets played the ball by Carver Howe. He crossfields it towards our left winger. He takes a touch to set himself, and that is a wonderful goal by the teenager. Absolutely superb strike. And this season, we scored quite a few really nice team goals as I've been trying to make that my emphasis not shooting the ball from outside the area as much trying to work the ball inside but at that time the ball set up nicely for him I thought I'll try and smash that ball into the far post and that's a wonderful goal the goalkeeper though like I'm, I don't know why he didn't dive he seems to like jog towards the ball and then stopped which I thought was kind of funny maybe he just thought the ball was going to go wide or something maybe a bit of a uh, poor lapse of concentration but even so a wonderful strike by Pacandela his first goal of the season and it is Racing to Ibar nil so delighted to take the lead in this game, five minutes before, uh, sorry, yeah, to get a second goal of the game, uh, five minutes before the break, and it is Paco Candela who gets the goal, and it was just such a surprise, you know, because Candela is a really decent youngster, he's a really decent left winger for us, but I've always felt as though physically he's not that great, technically he's not that great either, but he's more of a sort of a, a contributor in terms of getting the passes, getting the assists instead, but he gets a wonderful goal there, the best goal of his career so far, surely, and it's Racing 2, Ibar nil. but from that, Ibar get themselves forward for another chance here as they get the ball inside uh, towards the number 21, he's Strikes it just off target behind for a goal kick, and it was still 2-0. So, you know, Ibar in the first half did have a couple of chances here and there, but their finishing just wasn't up to scratch. In the 48th minute, a great chance to make it 3-0. Paco Candela, who scored our second goal, crosses the ball in, looks for Morata. But it's a wonderful save by the Ibar goalkeeper, though, and turn behind for a corner. So, still racing to Ibar nil. And just before the hour mark, you're in a great chance to make it 3-0. Paco Candela finds Isco. Isco is running at the defenders, but holds the ball up instead and finds Morata. Morata finds Paco Candela. Candela on the ball here decides not to to shoot this time and plays that wide towards Grimaldo our left back, takes it around his man, plays it inside towards young Hanalise, quick little fake shot and a wonderful finish as well by another academy player, so first pack of Candela, now young Hanalise both of those players out of the Racing Santander Academy, holding down first team positions and, you know, this game proved exactly why. Elise is such an underrated player in this side. Really awesome defensive midfielder. That's now his third goal in La Liga. Paco Candela scored a wonderful goal in this game. He's had a pretty good season as well. That's why those two, uh, those two players keep their places in the first 11, despite the fact we've got some better players in terms of the overall on the bench. In the 82nd minute, Grimaldo went pretty close there to making it 4-0 but it was a good stop by the goalkeeper and it was still Racing 3, Ibar 0. And the final chance would fall to the wayside in the 90th minute as they went in search of a consolation goal. They, cry, they uh, pass the ball inside, the shot comes in, but it's off target and it goes behind for a goal kick. So final score, Racing Santander 3, Ibar 0. Another victory notched up for Racing Santander. And I really don't like to say it, I really don't like to sound cocky and arrogant, but I definitely feel as though this league title is not exactly already won. 
But as you see Barcelona slip up again here, it's ours to lose, let's just say that. But regardless, uh, following that, we see that Ruben Blanco is going to join Getafe on a short-term loan. Uh, he was our goalkeeper. He was really, really good for us. De Gea came in for his debut season this year, and Blanco was not happy about getting dropped. Can't really blame him, considering the fact his form was always excellent for us. But he just didn't grow, and I'm going to loan him out to Getafe, try and keep him a bit happier, and uh, we'll get him back in a few months' time. So it's a shame, because I, I really like Blanco, as you guys know. He's a monster in the game but he just wouldn't grow De Gea is in now he's not going to get back into the first team so we can go out on short on a short term loan and uh, get some game time be a bit happier and there you go and uh, also following that we put in a new bid for Jose Gaia I really 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 want this guy uh, I really want this guy how can I pun that I really want this guy uh, is that does, that does that work sort of I really want this guy anyway he's an awesome left back he's in my Spain squad why did I even bother doing that he's an awesome left back in my Spain squad right now he's only 24 years old 80 overall would love to get hold of the guy but Valencia just will not sell him and you can't really blame them either really really good prospect and I think he's going to stay at the Mestalla uh, still we'll have to wait and see and uh, we take on Real Madrid for the second and final game of today's episode here as Ancelotti's side come and take us on El Sardinero for the second leg of the Copa del Rey semi-final in the first leg at the Bernabeu we won it by a goal to nil which was really really surprising but coming into this game it took them just four minutes to take the lead and level the score on aggregate it's Muller who gets the goal to German who heads in the cross into the goal and it was a surprise as well because in you know 180 minutes worth of football in the two games we played against Real Madrid prior to this one first in La Liga and then the Copa del Rey hadn't scored a single goal and didn't really look threatening at all but for Muller to take the lead just four minutes in they caught us by surprise, really, and did open the scoring. So 1-0 to Real Madrid. Perez went pretty close to equalising there in the 10th minute, but that's showing over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0. And in the 14th minute, a great chance for Real Madrid to make it 2-0. Ronaldo's header goes into the side netting, though, and behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0 to Real Madrid. In seven minutes later, another great chance for us. Here we cross in this corner, but the header by Al Brahim is cleared off the line by Luka Modric. Big interception there by the former Spurs midfielder, and the Croatian keeps it at 1-0 to Real Madrid. In the 32nd minute, you see Reina go down on the right hand side great chance to make it two uh, sorry yeah one one as he cuts inside he's getting his shirt pulled but he keeps on going shoots as well but Blazvic makes an absolutely superb double save brilliant first stop by the German then gets back to his feet to deny a great uh, goal by Reina and keep it at 1-0 to Real Madrid and from the corner it's crossed in headed away only as far as Hector Bellerin picks it back up and finds conscious Salas we regain possession play it out wide it's uh, not really dealt with by Real Madrid it comes to Roy Haran his shot is well dealt with by Blazvic though and eventually Real Madrid get the ball away as it comes to Tunkara and his shot goes wide at the Post. So still racing nil Real Madrid one. But in the first half, despite them leading, we were playing pretty well. We were just a little bit unfortunate. In the second half, though, aiming us after the restart, Real Madrid could have made it 2-0, but this shot by Muller goes off target and behind for a goal kick. So still 1-0 as they look for the goal that would surely send them through um, to the next round of Copa del Rey. Perez then goes pretty close from this ambitious free kick, which Plasvich deals with, and Real Madrid clear. So still racing nil Real Madrid one as the game was coming to its close. 15 minutes before the end, though, Real Madrid could have killed the game off as they played the ball through towards Gareth Bale down the right hand side. He picks out Thomas Muller, but he can't get his second goal of the game and puts the shot off target. But in the 90th minute, it was still Racing nil. Real Madrid won. We were defending and trying to hold off their onslaught of attacks. In the 90th minute, we looked as though we were going to extra time, but as Gareth Bale keeps hold of this ball, swings the cross into the far post. He's not fully dealt with by Barrios. We just can't get the ball away. And as James Rodriguez finds Gareth Bale here inside the area, we force him out, but he gives it to the left back, Fabio Contral. The Portuguese crosses the ball into the center. It's flicked backwards by Muller, and it comes to Ronaldo. And in stoppage time with the final attack of the game as it looked as though we were going into extra time for another 30 minutes. Al Brahim lunges in a little bit and Ronaldo feels the contact and hits the deck as well and the referee has no choice but to award a penalty. So there wasn't actually that much of a sort of malicious attempt from Al Brahim. There wasn't too much contact but there was enough to bring Ronaldo down and I just can't complain about it. You know, we've, we've got some debatable penalty decisions this season in our favour. That one I didn't think was that debatable. I think it was a penalty and the referee called it right. So a great Great chance for Real Madrid to uh, send themselves through to the next round of the Copa del Rey from the penalty, and they do by uh, seeing Ronaldo score. So Cristiano Ronaldo makes it Racing nil, Real Madrid 2. We are going to lose for the first time this season at El Sardinero, and in general, haven't lost a game all season. We're going to lose here, though, and sadly, because of that second goal, Real Madrid are going through to the Copa del Rey semi-finals because we're not going to be able to score two goals late on because of the away goal ruling. They are through to the next round, as you'll see. The referee blows for full time, pretty much straight 
straight after kickoff. And unfortunately for us, it's not only our first defeat of the season, it's also the first competition we will not be able to win because we're out courtesy of that late Cristiano Ronaldo penalty. And I only have myself to blame as well because it was a silly, silly lunge, to be honest. I tried to win the ball and just get the ball away, but I didn't time it right. And Ronaldo had every right to go down and win that penalty and he scored it as well. So final score, Racing and Il Real Madrid 2, our first defeat of the season in all competitions. Gutted about that. Round of uh, Copa del Rey, we will not be winning that trophy again and sadly for us, it's a competition down. We can keep on focusing on the league and the uh, Champions League though. I guess that's the positive. We don't have a third distraction but that does end the episode guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Club and Country then please do leave likes. It's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.